Good afternoon, everybody. I am not in Idaho, as you can tell. I am in Virginia on uh, spring break with my family. I thought that I would get in a quick vacation before the Lori Vallow's trial starts in a few weeks. And of course, there's news. And I know many of you, We, we I put out earlier, uh, thanks to my colleague, Rhett Nelson, he was in the courtroom this morning when Judge Boyce ruled that the death penalty will not be on the table any longer for Lori Vallow. And so many of you have been messaging me, texting me, um, uh, emailing me saying, what exactly does this mean and what happened? And uh, I've listened to the court recording and basically it all came down to this last minute evidence that the prosecution um, turned over to the defendants and the fact that uh, the mitigation specialist on Lori's team said that she simply would not have enough time to process all of this. So let me back up and, and kind of explain all this. When it's a death penalty case, the bar is much higher. And uh, if, if the prosecution does go for death, then a mitigation specialist is assigned or joins the defense team. And that person is to basically advocate, find everything that they can about the defendant, in this case, Lori Vallow Daybell, and, and present the case as to why she or he does not deserve death. It's basic, basically their advocate. So they do a whole life uh, deep dive from the time that they were kids. They do interviews with people. They do all sorts of stuff. And then if the defendant is found guilty by the jury, the jury in Idaho decides if the death penalty should be pursued or life in prison. And then you go into the sentencing phase and that's where witnesses would take the stand about why the defendant does or does not deserve death. So what happened was last week, you may recall, the mitigation specialist on Lori's team said, we just got all this evidence. Well, the, the, the attorney said, we just got all this evidence turned over from the prosecution. There's so much evidence here. We don't have enough time to go through it all. And because Lori Vallow has not waived her right to a speedy trial, this trial has to start. Chad has waived his right to a speedy trial. So they can deal with that down the road. The judge, had Lori uh, waived her right to a speedy trial, Judge Boyce could have said, all right, we'll just continue the trial. We'll give the mitigation specialist more time to go through all of this. But because Lori had not done that, the, the judge had to do something. So the argument was, um, do you disqualify all this evidence that the, that the prosecution turned in on the day of the deadline? So the deadline, the, the judge said all evidence must be turned over prior to February 27th, but the prosecution turned things over at four o'clock on the 27th. So do you toss all of that out? Um, that could be, that's a significant portion of evidence. Do you toss out evidence that came in after that? Because there has been stuff after that, including jailhouse calls from Chad. Uh, do you toss that out? And the judge went through this all as he was explaining his ruling this afternoon. And the judge made it very clear that the prosecution in his eyes has not done anything wrong as far as, uh, you know, intentionally misleading the court and that Jim Archibald has not done anything wrong. He said that he's worked with both parties uh, multiple times, multiple cases. I, mean, I think he even said hundreds of cases and stuff like this has not happened before. In fact, Jim Archibald even said he's never had this issue with the prosecution before in this, except in this case. The prosecution has said it's because there's so much evidence and it's, it's, it's continually, they're continually getting it. And so it all came down to what do you do? Do you go forth with the trial and you have a mitigation specialist who says, okay, uh, I wasn't ready, but I didn't have enough time to do all this. And then if she's sentenced to death, you, you have issues on appeals or, or do you toss out the death penalty? And that's why Judge Boyce did it. He simply said it came down to that. This last minute evidence, because the bar is so much higher, uh, it, it, it'll make the case, um, I don't want to say easier, but, but it won't be as, as, uh, is uh, laser focused on certain things. So death penalty is out for Lori Vallow. There were a couple of arguments, other arguments that Lori's team made, such as media coverage and the fact that the death penalty is unconstitutional or should be unconstitutional. And the fact that currently in Idaho, <coughs> they haven't put anybody to death recently because 
they can't get the drugs for the lethal injection. In fact, interesting side note, the Idaho legislature just passed a bill to bring back the firing squad and it's on the governor's desk as we speak. So um, if you can't get the lethal injection drugs, you could die by firing squad. And and the, the state has waited to uh, uh, execute somebody for, I believe it's been postponed two or three times lately because they can't get the drugs. So anyway, that's a side note. So um, the judge really, his main focus on arguing this was, or uh, on issuing this opinion was saying, listen, uh, the mitigation specialist isn't ready. And this last minute evidence keeps coming in and I can't postpone this trial any longer or else it'll violate her right, Lori's right to a speedy trial. So that's what's gonna happen. So now the trial should be much shorter because you won't have that sentencing phase and jury selection will be shorter, I would imagine, because in jury selection, they were going to have to get into deep uh, death penalty issues, ask all potential jurors, do you believe in the death penalty? Do you, what are your feelings about the death penalty? And if any of them said, I, I, everybody should be killed or something like that, they're going to be disqualified. Well, now they don't have to go there. So I imagine you'll see the case will get started uh, as far as opening arguments, that'll get started sooner rather than later. And once the jury comes back with a verdict, if the, the verdict is guilty, previously, they would have gone right into the sentencing phase. <coughs> Excuse me. That could have lasted a week or two where there's witnesses and there's experts and all of that. And then the jury would have come back and said, life in prison or death. Well, now, if the verdict comes back guilty, the judge will impose the sentence and it probably won't happen right away. The judge will prop what, what happens in other cases that I've seen is if there's a guilty verdict, the judge then orders a pre-sentence investigation. And so everybody goes home. Lori won't go home. She'll go back to jail if she's found guilty. But, um, and then two months later, a month later, three months later, whatever it takes, the judge then comes back and the sentencing is issued. And she very well could be sentenced in Fremont County, back where the crimes, the alleged crimes were committed. So that's kind of how it works. Now that the death penalty is off the table, trial could be shorter. The sentence we won't know right away. It'll be down the road a little bit, most likely. Um, as far as Chad, Chad still is facing the death penalty. And I, I, many of you are asking, does that apply? Does this apply to Chad? Are they going to take it off the table for Chad? At this point, no, because uh, he has more time. Now, his attorney could obviously file a motion and say, yeah, get death penalty off the table for him as well. But um, that, that will take some time. We're still waiting on a trial date for Chad. We don't know when that will be. Um, could be later this year. Could be next year. He could take a plea agreement between now and then. We'll just have to wait and see. Many of you asking, what was Lori's response? Uh, Rhett, my colleague, was in court. He obviously couldn't see her because everyone sits behind her. Uh, he couldn't see if she smiled or anything, but we did get video of her leaving that I've posted here. And she had, she seemed to be behaving her normal way, kind of a, a smile a little bit, uh, did not look distraught or disturbed or anything. But, um, you know, there's, there's that. That's how she looks. So a big development today. There, the other issue was, will the judge admit this evidence that came in on that technical day after the deadline <coughs> excuse me he said that um he's going to issue a written order by tomorrow and see how that goes but again he did not fault either side he didn't fault the prosecution he didn't fault the defense he doesn't think that they're acting in bad faith it's just simply that the the uh evidence uh came in late and there's a lot of evidence in this case so i hope that makes sense somebody just asked where are you in idaho i'm not in idaho i'm on i'm in virginia um, and, and I actually used to work here in news. So many of you know me from TV eight. It's great to be back here. Uh, been seeing a lot of people that we know and I've randomly run into, um, some old sources. I do want to mention, I posted earlier, many of you may have seen that Tammy Daybell's parents, uh, Ron Douglas submitted a request to judge Boyce that they be able to watch the trial remote. They live in Springville, Utah, several hours away from Boise. And Ron's wife, Phyllis, is not in the best of health. Uh, wonderful couple. Um, but it, it's it's hard for anyone, really, to go sit in a courtroom for eight hours a day for six to eight weeks. And so he asked if there would be some way to get a remote camera uh, to their um, house or something. And the judge said no. The judge denied that. So they're going to, if they want to see it, they're going to have to go up there. Um, I know, I know you all are asking... <coughs> 
there there are no cameras in Lori's case. Uh, Chad's case, as of now, there are still no cameras. We'll wait and see. We'll request it most likely after Lori's case is done. It'd be great to, you know, have the camera in there. And we'll still request maybe for sentencing because that's a whole separate phase. But as of now, we're working on getting a sketch artist in there and we're working on posting audio every day. We just posted the audio. If you want to listen to the judge's ruling, it's about 40 minutes. Go to the East Idaho News YouTube page and I'll post it here in a bit. Go to that page and you can listen to the whole thing. He lays it out why he's ruling the way he ruled, why the death penalty is off the table. You can, you know, leave your comments there and let, let us know what you think. So, again, big news today in the Daybell case. We can have it. It all begins, well, April 3rd. Um, next week, potential jurors will drop off questionnaires at the courthouse. They'll go through those. Then they'll be called back on the 3rd, April 3rd, if they're potential jurors. And then they'll do jury selection for probably three to four days, uh, maybe shorter. And then um, it begins. It begins the opening statements, the opening arguments. And I think my uh, little boy wants to say hi. They're all like, Dad, why have you been working today? We're on vacation. But I'll end with this. Hi, Elliot. Do you want to come and say hi? Hi. Are you ready for dinner? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for watching. And uh, go ahead and get caught up on the case with the stories I posted. There's Everett. Are we leaving? Yeah. Okay. See ya.